Welcome to the IT free training video on Hyper-V licensing with Windows Server. It is important to understand how licensing works with the different editions of Windows Server to ensure that you are compliant and understand the requirements. The first point I would like to make is that your choice of virtualization does not affect licensing. So, assuming you have purchased licenses for the Windows Server that you are running, you can use any virtualization solution on the market. This includes non-Microsoft virtualization solutions. For example, if you have three copies of Windows Server running in virtual machines, you could run these three virtual machines using Hyper-V. You could also run them using VMware or Microsoft Virtual Server. There are a number of virtualization products available on the market, and your choice of which one to use does not affect licensing of Windows Server. The first edition of Windows that I will look at is Data Center. If you purchase the Data Center edition of Windows Server, you can run an unlimited number of virtual machines running Data Center. Essentially, this means that when you install the Data Center edition on a physical server, you are free to run as many virtual machines on that server as you want, only limited by the hardware of that server. If you install Data Center edition on each virtual machine, you will not need to purchase any additional licenses. If you are planning to run a lot of virtual machines, Data Center is a good option to reduce your licensing costs. The Data Center license costs a lot more than the other Windows Server licenses, and purchasing hardware that can use a lot of CPUs and a large amount of RAM is also quite expensive. It is a matter of the administrator deciding if it is worth the cost, or if buying a few servers may be a better option. If you are running Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2 Standard Edition, this allows two standard editions of Windows Server to be run free of charge. There is, however, a limitation with this. The only role that can be installed on the physical server is Hyper-V. The idea behind this is that the physical server should only be used to manage the virtual machines. For example, you should not be using the physical server for file sharing or providing additional services for users. You are not, however, limited to just running Hyper-V for your virtualization solution. You could also run another virtualization solution. For example, you are free to run VMware, and with the one Windows Server Edition license, you could run two virtual machines running Windows Standard Edition on the one physical server. So essentially, running Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2 in a virtual machine gives you two for the price of one. If you are running Windows Server Essentials or Windows Server Multipoint, this allows one physical install or one virtual machine install. If you install the Essentials or Multipoint on a physical server, you are not able to perform any more installs with that license. However, you could also choose to install Essentials or Multipoint on a virtual machine. So basically, one license of either of these products gives you the choice of installing it on a physical server or a virtual machine. The last edition of Windows Server I will look at is the Hyper-V edition. So far, I have looked at all the other editions of Windows Server that are shipped with Hyper-V. This edition contains a slimmed down version of Windows Server. This is essentially Windows Server Core and is designed to run only the Hyper-V role. It is designed to run virtual machines and nothing else, but it can be joined to the domain, making it easier to manage. Since it is only a virtualization solution, Microsoft allows you to download it free of charge. Using it does give you some advantages. Since it is slimmed down, it has less software running on the server. This means fewer updates and less software that an attacker could potentially use. This also means potentially fewer resources used on the server. It is up to the administrator to decide which they want to go with. If you are planning on installing Windows Server Standard on a virtual machine using Hyper-V, it may be worth it for the administrator to use the standard edition for the virtualization solution. This gives them more options later on if they change their mind or their requirements change. With Hyper-V, if you need to add features later on, your only choice will be to perform a reinstall of a different edition. Well, that covers it for licensing for Hyper-V in Windows Server 2012 and R2. I hope you found this video informative, and I hope to see you in the other videos from us, from this course, and others. Until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.